Welcome, Horlings, to another Game Order production. Well, I figured, hey, we've done Zork the game book. Why not knock out Zork the game itself? The Great Underground Empire. Zork 1. Old school text-based adventure game. I've done a few of these on my channel. Uh, I think the ones I've done so far at least had a graphic window. This might be the first straight up uh, text only adventure game that I'll be doing. Um, figured why not knock this out. This is kind of like, you know, a game that you can beat in an hour or so. And I thought it would couple good with the game book. I'm already working on the second game book as well. So, hopefully you enjoy this. I'm not going to add sound effects to the game. We're just going to play it like the good old days. In case you were wondering. Fuck that. Also, this uh, playthrough will be pretty direct. Uh, not going to do a whole lot of typing in commands that don't get me anywhere. Things like that. Um, beat this probably, I don't know, 20 years ago or more. So, been a while. Don't really remember too much of it. But it'll be fun. We are apparently west of a house. You are standing in an open field west of a white house. With a boarded front door. There's a small mailbox here. Well, whoop de fucking do. Um, let's see. Open mailbox. Seems like a good idea. Opening the small mailbox reveals a leaflet. Read leaflet. Welcome to Zork. Zork's an adventure. Danger, a game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. In it, you will explore some of the most amazing territory ever seen by mortals. No computer should be without one. If we type in Zork, it says, at your service. If we type in jump, it says, are you enjoying yourself? And if we type it in again, it says, very good. Now you go to the second grade. We type in scream. Ah! Some of the little funny things that you can do. And you have to know how to spell to play this game. This is, these are what was great about these old school games is the parser and and uh, all these old text-based adventure games where, where you typed in everything. And it kind of it got me uh, a lot better at typing on the keyboard. Uh, and you know, any kind of reading or typing out sentences, things like that, is, is always good for your your early language skills. You are facing the north side of a white house. There's no door here, and all the windows are boarded up. To the north of a narrow path winds to the north, a narrow path winds through trees. Okay, well, let's go check out some of these trees. This is the path winding through a dimly lit forest. The path heads north, south here. One particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. Let's climb it. You are about ten feet above the ground, nestled among some large branches. The nearest branch above you is above your reach. Beside you, on the branch is a small bird's nest. In the bird's nest is a large egg encrusted with precious jewels, apparently scavenged by a childless songbird. The egg is covered with fine gold inlay and ornamented in lapis lazuli and mother of pearl. Unlike most eggs, this one is hinged and closed with a delicate looking clasp. The egg appears extremely fragile. Try not to drop the egg. You are behind the White House. The path leads into the forest to the east. In one corner of the house, there is a small window which is slightly ajar. Let's open the window. With great effort, you open the window far enough to allow entry. All right. We're in the kitchen. The kitchen of the White House. A table seems to have been used recently for preparation for food. A passage leads to the west and a dark staircase can be seen leading upward. A dark chimney leads down and to the east is a small window which is open. On the table is an elongated brown sack smelling of hot peppers. A bottle is sitting on the table. You can kind of see some of the similarities between the game book and the game we are playing here. More hot peppers. Does that mean there will be a troll soon? 
We'll go ahead and take this bottle, and then we'll jump. This was not a very safe place to try jumping. Geronimo, you have died. Now let's take a look here. Well, you probably deserve another chance. I can't quite fix you up completely, but you can't have everything. Well, I don't know. Why the fuck did I die? <laughs> Dumb as shit. get back to the house. Okay, note to self, don't jump in the kitchen. So we will take the uh, bottle. You are in the living room. There's a doorway to the east, a wooden door with a strange gothic lettering to the west, which appears to be nailed shut. A trophy case and a large oriental rug in the center of the room. Above the trophy case hangs an elvish sword of great antiquity. A battery-powered brass lantern is on the trophy case. Oh, it's the sword of Zork. Look at sword. Nothing special about the sword. And a battery-powered lantern, which was also in the book. Book did a good job of keeping some nostalgic similarities to the game itself. Go back east, and we'll go up. We've moved into a dark place. It's pitch black. You are likely to get eaten by a Gru. Turn on our battery-powered lantern. A large coil of rope is lying in the corner. On the table is a nasty-looking knife. Take the rope. We'll turn off our lantern to save battery. Let's look at the knife. Look at that nasty looking knife. <laughs> so nasty. It is now pitch black. Elongated brown sacks, smelling of hot peppers. There's also a a rug. With great effort, the rug is moved to one side of the room, revealing the dusty cover of a closed trap door. Hmm. Really sounds a lot like the book now, doesn't it? Closed trap door. Okay. The door reluctantly opens to reveal a rickety staircase descending into the darkness. It's pitch black. You're likely to be eaten by a Gru. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. Guess we're turning our lantern back on. You are in a dark and damp cellar with a narrow passageway leading north and a crawlway to the south. On the west is the bottom of the steep metal ramp, which is unclimbable. Okay. Can I save my game? Insert or save disk. Default is... Uh, okay, let's do C. Zork 1. You know what? Fuck you! I don't know if I can save in this. Um, I don't know if you can save states on DOSBox either. I've never tried. I think you can. Let me investigate. Well, I can't figure it out. 
This is a small room with passages to the east and south and a forbidding hole leading west. Bloodstains and deep scratches, perhaps made by an axe, mar the walls. A nasty-looking troll brandishing a bloody axe blocks all passages out of the room. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. The reason I wanted to save is because this troll can mess you up. The troll's weapon is knocked to the floor, leaving him unaware. The troll, angered and humiliated, recovers his weapon. He appears to have an axe to grind with you. You gotta keep doing it. Cling! Crash! The troll parries. The troll swings and almost knocks you over as you barely peril in time. Parry in time. The troll's weapon is knocked to the floor. Okay. A good slash, but it misses the troll by a mile. The troll's mighty blow drops you to your knees. Guess this is all randomly random chance. The troll swings, the blade turns on your armor but crashes broadside into your head. Finally, the fatal blow strikes the troll square in the heart. He dies. Almost as soon as the troll breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him. And when the fog lifts, the carcass has disappeared. Your sword is no longer glowing. You have a light wound, which will be cured after 29 moves. You can be killed by one more light wound. That's not good. You're in the maze. It's part of the maze of twisty little passages all alike. All right. The maze. The skeleton, probably the remains of a luckless adventurer, lies here. Beside the skeleton is a rusty knife. The deceased adventurer's useless lantern is here. There's a skeleton key here. An old leather bag bulging with coins is here. I'll take them coins. The load is too heavy. need to heal. Alright, now we got the coins and we're not all beat to shit. Uh, that just takes you more moves, obviously, if you get injured and they screw you over. Oops. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. This room has an exit on the northwest and a staircase leading up. A cyclops who looks prepared to eat horses, much less mere adventurers, blocks the staircase. From his state of health and the bloodstains on the walls, you gather that he is not very friendly, though he likes people. Your sword is beginning to glow very brightly.
Do you remember the story of the Cyclops and Ulysses? The Cyclops, hearing the name of his father's deadly nemesis, flees the room by knocking down the wall in the east of the room. The sword is no longer glowing. All right, from here we're going to go north west. And we're going to drop our coins. Trust me. This is a large room whose east wall is solid granite. A number of discarded bags which crumble at your touch are scattered about the floor. There's an exit down a staircase. There's a suspicious looking individual holding a large bag leaning against one wall. He's armed with a deadly stiletto. There's a silver chalice intricately engraved here. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. The thief draws blood raking his stiletto across your arm. The thief is taken aback by your unexpected generosity, but accepts the drool encrusted egg and stops to admire its beauty. After he cuts the shit out of us. Someone carrying a large bag is casually leaning against one of the walls. He does not speak, but it is clear from his aspect that the bag will be taken only over his dead body. Your sword begins to glow brightly. Okay. Another bag of coins, sword rope, brass lantern, glass bottle, coin of water, leaflet. I'm not sure I understand that. To the west is one entrance, on the east there is an old wooden door with a large opening on it. About Cyclops sized. All right. Inventory. We put the coins into the chest there. A bloody axe here in the troll room. A chasm runs southwest to northeast, and the path follows it. You are on the south side of the chasm where a crack opens into a passage. You're in a long room on the south shore of the large lake, far too deep and wide for crossing. There's a path along the stream to the east or west. A steep pathway climbing southwest along the edge of the chasm, and a path leading into a canyon to the southeast. Need 11 more moves before I'm healed. Can't go that way. Oh, I already went that way. Let's go east to the dam. 
You are standing on top of the flood control dam number three, which is quite a tourist attraction in times far distant. There are paths to the north, south, and west and a scramble down. Sula's gates on the dam are closed. Beyond the dam, there can be seen a wide reservoir. Water is pouring over the top and now the abandoned dam. There's a control panel here, which a large metal bolt is mounted. Directly above the bolt is a small green plastic bubble. This room appears to have been a waiting room for groups touring the dam. There are open doorways here to the north and east, marked private. There's a path leading south over the top of the dam. Some guidebooks entitled Flood Control Dam Number 3 are on the reception desk. There's a matchbook whose cover said Visit Beautiful FCD Number 3 here. We will take the matchbook. And then we will go south twice. You can hear the sound of flowing water from below. This is a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There's a narrow passage from east to west and a stony stair leading upward. The room is definitely loud with the undetermined rushing sound. The sound seems to reverberate off from all the walls, making it difficult even to think. On the ground is a large platinum bar. It's too noisy to do anything here, so just go west. This is a circular stone room with passages in all directions. Several of them have unfortunately been blocked by cave-ins. You have entered a low cave with passages leading northwest and east. There are old engravings on the walls here. The engravings were incised in the living rock of this cave wall by an unknown hand. They depict in symbolic form the beliefs of the ancient Zorkers. Skillfully interwoven with the boss relief are ex excerpts illustrating the major religious tenets of that time. Unfortunately, a later age seems to have considered them blasphemous and just to skillfully excise them. You are at the periphery of the large dome which forms the ceiling of another room below. Protecting you from the perceptuous drop is a wooden railing which circles the dome. Whoa, we're high up on the dome room. Jumping would be bad. The rope drops over the side and comes within 10 feet of the floor. Sitting on a pedestal is a flaming torch made of ivory. Don't want to take it for now. This is the north end of a large temple. On the east wall is an ancient inscription, properly a prayer in a long-forgotten language. Below the prayer is a staircase leading down. The west wall is solid granite. The exit to the north end of the room is through huge marble pillars. There's a brass bell here. I'll take the bell, though. This is the south end of a large temple. In front of you is what appears to be an altar. In one corner is a small hole in the floor which leads into the darkness. You could probably not get back up to it. On the two ends of the altar are burning candles. On the altar is a large black book open to page 569. O ye who go about saying unto each other, Hello, sailor, dost thou know the magnitude of thy sin before the gods? Yeah, verily thou shalt be ground between two stones. Shall the angry gods cast thy body into a whirlpool? Surely thy eyes shall be put out with a sharp stick. Even unto the ends of the earth shalt thou wander, and unto the land of the dead shalt thou be sent at last. Surely thou shalt repent of thy cunning. This book is awesome. Let's take it. Okay, we read it and we took it. We read commandment 12.592. This is a tiny cave with entrances west and north and a dark... Forbidding staircase leading down. A gust of wind blows out your candles. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. The gate is open. Through it you can see... Whoa, you're outside a large gateway of which is inscribed, Abandon every hope, all ye who enter here. Notice it says entrance to Hades. The gate is open. Though 
Through it, you can see the desolation with a pile of mangled bodies in one quarter. Thousands of voices lamenting some hideous fate can be heard. The way through the gate is barred by evil spirits who jeer at your attempts to pass. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. Let the exorcism begin. You have five matches. The bell suddenly becomes red hot and falls to the ground. The wraiths, as if paralyzed, stop their jeering and slowly turn to face you. On their ashen faces, the expression of a long-forgotten terror takes shape. In your confusion, the candles drop to the ground, and they are out. One of the matches starts to burn. The candles are lit. The match has gone out. Waving the pair of candles has no effect. The flames flicker wildly and appear to dance. The earth beneath your feet trembles and your legs nearly buckle beneath you. The spirits cower at your unearthly power. Each word of the prayer reverberates through the hall in a deafening confusion. As the last word fades, a voice, loud and commanding, speaks, Be gone, fiends! A heart-stomping scream fills the cavern, and the spirits, sensing a greater power, flee through the walls. Your sword is no longer glowing. The water cools the bell and has evaporated. The bell appears to have cooled down. We'll take it back. We won't need the bottle, so we'll drop it. You have entered the land of the living dead. Thousands of lost souls can be heard weeping and moaning. In the corner are stacked the remains of dozens of previous adventurers less fortunate than yourself. A passage exists to the north. Lying in one corner of the room is a beautifully carved crystal skull. It appears to be grinning at you rather nastily. It's Morde. We're taking him. Thank you. to get the fudge out of here. This is an art gallery. Most of the paintings have been stolen by vandals with the exceptional taste. The vandals left through either the north or west exits. Fortunately, there's still one chance for you to be a vandal. For on the far wall is a painting of unparalleled beauty. Okay, I got rid of the leaflet. Don't really need that either. Okay, I think I might have figured out the save situation. Which is good because we have a part coming up here that's be a pain in the ass without it. All right, what do we got here? I don't think we need the bell. We can also and let's just drop the bell for now. And we're gonna take the coins. 
Okay. Um, Oh fuck, now I'm all kinds of lost. Need to get myself out of here. Best way will be to restore. Alright, uh, we're back where the thief is, it looks like. Holding a large bag, leaning against one wall. He's armed with a deadly stiletto. There's a silver chalice intricately engraved here. Your sword has begun to glow. Quick thrust pinks your left arm and blood starts to trickle down. Okay, 40,000 40, time of fighting the thief. Slash, your blow lands. That one hit an artery. It could be serious. The thief rams that for the blade in your stomach, leaving you out of breath. Fuck it, I'm gonna save. All right, the force of your blow knocks the thief back, stunned. He slowly regains to his feet, then the haft of your sword knocks out the thief. The unarmed thief cannot defend himself. He dies. Almost as soon as the thief breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him. And when the fog lifts, the carcass has disappeared. As the thief dies, the power of his magic decreases, and his treasures reappear. So the coins and the skull that I ended up giving him to throw him off guard... Uh, the stiletto he attacked with, and the jewel encrusted egg with a golden clockwork canary. Okay, so we need to take our stuff. drop our sword for now. We're in perfect health. Um, well, first of all, it's safe. Go down. Okay, this is where our case is. Let's put all treasures in case. 
Put all the treasures in the case. Jewel encrusted egg, golden clockwork canary. That's easy for you to say since you don't even have the golden clockwork canary. Crystal skull, leather bags, painting. Take sword, take stiletto, take chalice. Put the chalice in there. I'm going to take the canary. Go east. Keep typing the whole word. You just need to put the first letter. the canary in the tree. The canary chirps slightly off key, an aria from a forgotten opera. From out of the greenery flies a lovely songbird. It perches on the limb just over your head and opens its beak to sing. As it does so, a beautiful brass bubble drops from its mouth, bounces off the top of your head, and lands glimmering in the grass. As the canary winds down, the songbird flies away. Need the lantern on right now. So we have the chalice, the painting, the leather bag of coins, the crystal skull, the jewel encrusted egg, golden clockwork canary, and a beautiful brass bubble. All right, we got lots of treasures. We need to drain the reservoir. This is what appears to have been maintenance room for flood control, dam number three. Apparently this room has been ransacked recently, for the most volume of equipment is gone. On the wall in front of you is a group of buttons colored blue, yellow, brown, and red. There are doorways to the west and south. Okay. Let's push the red button. You know, that's always a good idea. The lights within the room come on. Good, then we don't need to use my lantern. Take the wrench, take the screwdriver, and push the yellow button. Click! And we're going south two times. The small green plastic bubble is glowing serenely. Wasn't doing that before. Slew skates open and water pours through the dam.
Okay. Don't know if it's going to tell me if the dam empties. All right. Let's see. Let's go west. Need to turn our lantern back on now. You run what used to be a large lake, but which now is a large, large mud pile. Our shores to the north and south. Lying half buried in the mud is an old trunk, bulging with jewels. Drop. Drop screwdriver. Drop wrench. Dropping everything but our lantern. Uh oh. Running out of battery here. You are in a large cavernous room, the south of which formerly a lake. However, with water level lowered, there is merely a wide stream running through here. There's a slimy stairway leaving the room to the north. There's a handheld air pump here. This is an ancient room long underwater. There is an exit to the south and a staircase leading up. On the shore lies Poseidon's old crystal trident. We'll take that. Take the trunk. All right, more treasure. Time to head in the coal mines. Let's open the sack. There's some garlic here, which we will take. We will need that. Makes it a lot easier. I guess I could have said drop all. into the cave you're in a large square room with tall ceilings on the south wall is an enormous mirror which fills the entire wall there are exits on the other three sides of the room this is a cold and damp corridor where a long east-west passageway turns into a southward pass this is a small chamber which appears to have been part of a coal mine. On the south wall, the chamber letters granite wall are etched into the rock. To the east is a long passage, and there's a steep metal slide twisting downward. To the north is a small opening. You are standing at the entrance of what might have been a coal mine. The shaft enters the west wall, and there's another exit to the south end of the room. You're in a small room. Strange squeaky sounds may be heard coming from the passage north end. You may also escape to the east. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. It's never a good thing. 
You're in a room that only has doors to the east and south. In the corner of the room where the ceiling is a large vampire bat who is obviously deranged and holding his nose. There's an exquisite jade figurine here. Well, since we have the garlic, the vampire bat won't fuck with us. And of course my fucking load. This is a large room in the middle of which a small shaft is sending through the floor into the darkness below. To the west and north are exits from this room. Constructed over the top of the shaft is a metal framework to which a heavy iron chain is attached. At the end of the chain is a basket. Okay, now we got the figurine. Gas room. Short climb up the stairs and a narrow tunnel leading east. There's a sapphire encrusted bracelet here. We're in a very small room, and the corner is a rickety wooden ladder leading downward. It might be safe to descend. It's a rather wide room. On one side is the bottom of a narrow wooden ladder. To the west and south are passages leaving the room. This is a long, narrow passage which is cluttered with broken timbers. A wide passage comes from the east and turns at the west end of the room and into a very narrow passageway. From the west comes a strong draft. Drop everything but the lantern. You've come to a dead end in the mine. There's a small pile of coal here. The colon basket. Lower basket. We have the matchbook and the lantern. map here. There's all my stuff. Thank you. 
I'm going to take our candles, take the coal, take the screwdriver, and go south. This is a large cold room whose sole exit is to the north. In one corner there's a machine which is reminiscent of a clothes dryer. On its face is a switch which is labeled start. The switch does not appear to be manipulable by any human hand unless the fingers are about 1 16th by 1 4th inch. In front of the machine is a large lid which is closed. <sighs> okay. Stupid son of a bitch. The lid opens. Here we go, put some coal in there, close the lid. Move the switch with the screwdriver. The machine comes to life, figuratively, with a dazzling display of colored lights and bizarre noises. After a few moments, the excitement abates. Huge diamond on the inside. We'll take that. <clears throat> Put the candle in the basket, put the diamond in the basket, and the screwdriver in the basket. I can spell. Excuse me. All right, so we took everything but the broken timber, which is fine. We do not want the timber. Um, we can also drop the stiletto. I don't think we need that yet. Go back up the ladder. Raise the basket to where we are. Take the candle. Take the diamond. And our load is too heavy as usual. Um, I don't think we need the garlic anymore. What the fuck? Now I'm fucking lost. That's not good. Alright, I had to restore my game and get back. This time I uh, dropped the garlic in the vampire room and that seems to work. It stays there and he doesn't mess with me. So, leaving the garlic there, hopefully I don't need it. Raise the basket. So there he is, 
uh, Cobra Garlic's still here. The Vampire Bat this time doesn't fuck with me. I'll go ahead and save in there. And then we're going back down into the cellar. Turn bolt with the wrench. Actually turn. I should have had that lantern off this whole time. We have the candles lit. The sluice gates close and the water starts to collect behind the dam. Shouldn't be as loud in the loud room anymore. It's a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There's a narrow passage from east to west and a stone stairway leading upward. The room is eerie in its quietness, and on the ground is a large platinum bar. Turn our lantern back on. Torch room sitting on the pedestal is a flaming torch made of ivory. Turn the lantern off. Drop lantern. Drop candles. Take torch. Torch is actually another treasure, but it's also effectively an exhaust an inexhaustible light source. Uh, so that'll help. This room, which looks like an Egyptian tomb, there's an ascending staircase to the west. The solid gold coffin used for the burial of Ramses II is here. A specter, possibly that of the ancient Egypt itself, is in the coffin. The specter is ornamented, ornament, ornamented with color enamel and tapers to a sharp point. We'll take, did I say Spectra? I meant Scepter. Put all treasure, but scepter in case. All right, don't need to go back in the cellar. We're going to go east, 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 east. You're at the top of the Great Canyon on its west wall. From here, there is a marvelous view of the canyon and parts of the frigid river upstream. Across the canyon, the walls of the White Cliffs join the mighty ramparts of the Flathead Mountains to the east. Following the canyon upstream to the north, Aragain Falls may be seen, complete with rainbow. The mighty frigid river flows out from the Great Dark Cavern. To the west and south can be seen an immense forest stretching for miles around. A path leads northwest. It is possible to climb down into the canyon from here. Let's do it. You're on the ledge halfway up the wall of the River Canyon. 
You can see from here that the main flow of the Aragain Falls twists along the passage, which is impossible for, for you to enter. Below you is the canyon bottom. Above you is more cliff. We go down again and beneath the walls of the river canyon, which may be climbable here, the lesser part of the runoff of Aragain Falls flows by below. To the north is a narrow path. You're on a small rocky beach on the continuation of the Frigid River past the falls. The beach is narrow due to the presence of the white cliffs. The river canyon opens here and the sunlight shines in from above. A rainbow crosses over the falls to the east and a narrow path continues to the southwest. A rainbow crosses over the falls to the east and the narrow path continues to the southwest. Let's wave our scepter. Suddenly the rainbow appears to become solid and I venture walkable. I think the giveaway was the stairs and banister. A shimmering pot of gold appears at the end of the rainbow. We like pot, we'll take it. You're at the top of the Aragain Falls, an enormous waterfall with a drop of about 100, 450 feet. The only path here is on the north end. A solid rainbow spans the falls. You're on the east shore of the river. The water here seems somewhat treacherous. A path travels from the north to the south here. The south end quickly, turning around a sharp tunnel, sharp corner. You've moved into a dark place. It's pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru. Um, okay. Went back and got my torch. Well, I restored. Took my magical torch and uh, the scepter as well. You're in a large sandy beach on the east shore of the river, which is flowing quickly by. A path runs beside the river to the south here, and a passage is partially buried in the sand to the northeast. There's a shovel here. Sandfield Cave, whose exit is to the southwest. And we dig down until we find the scarab. Uh, we need to drop something. I think we can drop the shovel. All right, got that. Time to backtrack. And we're going to put all the treasure in the case except our torch. So the scarab, the pot of gold, and the scepter are going into our collection of treasure. All right. Let's go find more treasure. Last bottle. 
We get lost too easily in here. Down. Let's see. Got to do the down. It's a pain in the ass following this map. bitch of a time finding where I want to go here. Alright, we need to get back to the reservoir to find this fucking pump that I cannot find. Uh, down into the cellar. says I'm by what drowned. Okay. Now I can actually cross. That's what the problem was. Now I can take the pump. And you're at the base of Flood Control 3, but so now there's a folded pile of plastic here. We need that as well. strip of beach which runs along the base of the white cliffs. Okay, don't want to have the sword when you inflate the plastic boat or it will poke a hole in it. The boat inflates and appears seaworthy. A tan label is lying inside the boat. Get 
lead to a body of water, say launch. To get to shore, say land or direction what you want to maneuver. Warranty. This boat is guaranteed against all defects for a period of 76 milliseconds from date of purchase or until first use, whichever comes first. Warning, this boat is made of thin plastic. Good luck. We're in the magic boat on the frigid river. The frigid river descends here into the valley. There's a narrow beach on the west shore below the cliffs. In the distance, a faint rumbling can be heard. Whoa, what could it be? There's a red buoy here. That's good. Let's take it. I like buoys. The sound of rushing around is nearly unbearable here. On these shores, is a large landing area. Whoops! Opening the red buoy reveals a large emerald. Unfortunately, the magic boat doesn't provide protection from rocks and boulders. One meets at the bottom of waterfalls, including this one. Fuck me. Uh, you can land either to the east or the west. East. Okay, magic boat comes to rest on the shore. Now we can open the buoy. And we get a large emerald out of it. get out of the boat and deflate the boat and take the boat and we will put the emerald in the case. Back to Ramsey's coffin. All right, we're at the White Cliffs Beach. From here, we want to go west. And we're going to take the coffin. Definitely want the torch because it's the last treasure. Okay. So I guess we just have the coffin and the torch then. the altar. This is a forest with trees in all directions. To the east there appears to be sunlight. Looks like we magically warped out.
Okay, this should be the tree. All right, there we are. Put all treasure in case. An almost inaudible voice whispers in your ear, look to your treasures for the final secret. The map shows a forest with three clearings. The largest clearing contains a house. Three paths lead the large clearing. One of these paths leading southwest is marked to Stone Barrow. You're standing in front of a massive barrow of stone. In the east face is a huge stone door which is open. You cannot see into the dark of the tomb. As you enter the barrow, the door closes inexorably behind you. It is dark, but ahead is an enormous cavern, brightly lit. Through its center runs a wide stream. Spanning the stream is a small wooden footbridge, and beyond a path leads into a small dark tunnel. Above the bridge, floating in the air, is a large sign. It reads, All ye who stand before this bridge have completed... A great and perilous adventure, which has tested your wit and courage. You have mastered the first part of the Zork Trilogy. Those who pass over this bridge... Okay. The Zork Trilogy continues with Zork 2, The Wizard of Froboz, and completed in Zork 3, The Dungeon Master. Your score is 350, total of 350 points, and 594 moves. This gives you the rank of Master Adventurer. Hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play. Uh, got this done on my lunch hour at work. Quick and easy.